Hello and welcome to Minecraft Education Edition Escape Estate. I'm Isabella and I'm super excited to be joining you on this escape game. I don't know what is an escape room. So here I will let Dan introduce himself. Hi everyone, thanks Isabella. My name's Dan Noble. Uh, I'm currently located in Dumfries, Scotland. My pronouns are he and him. And I'm part of the extended team here at the awesome Cobblestone Collective. I'm a Minecraft mentor and a full-time Minecraft and education consultant. So I spend a lot of my day doing all sorts of Minecraft related activities. Super cool, Dan. And I'm Isabella. As you know, I'm tuning in here from Toronto, Ontario, which is the traditional land of the Huron-Wendat, the Seneca, and most recently, the Mississaugas of the Credit. As Dan's mentioned, we are the Cobblestone Collective. We are a team of current and formal educators who support students, teachers, and school districts to effectively integrate technology like Minecraft into uh, your classrooms to hopefully support learning through professional development workshops and also co-taught lessons such as this one that you're tuning in live right now. And your teacher and also yourself can find out more information about us and really encourage your teacher to register for more of these co-taught lessons. And you can find them at cobblestonecollective.ca. All righty, so what's in store for today? We have a lot planned. First, we're gonna be meeting a Minecrafter and rumor has it, She's in a very cool place right now. And number two, we're going to be escaping Dr. Burkowski's estate. And today we are going to be focusing on green path and particularly with block coding. Okay. And then finally, we're going to reflect on our adventure because ultimately we are trying to do some learning here. Uh, what do we learn about programming? How do we solve our problems? All of that through escape room. So remember that this is a video you can always pause and rewind this lesson any point in time. So if we are going a little too fast, feel free to pause this video and then take your time and then click play and then come back to here. We're always gonna be here. And before we begin, remember that you can see and hear us, but we can't hear or see you. So the way we're gonna communicate is using our form. So open up a new tab right now and Go to your address bar and type the cc.page forward slash Minecraft. And we're going to test out to see if you're able to communicate with us. And our question is, where are you joining from? We know that we have several people coming in from India. Hello, Shalini. Welcome. We have, let's see. Oh, we have Victoria coming in. We have Kenny. Thank you. For those who are typing in where you're tuning in live from, love to see you. Oh, we have people from all over the place. We have Vicky from Jacksonville, Florida. Welcome. Ooh, Miss Page class. <laughs> Shout out to Jacksonville. We have Jordan from Tacoma. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay. Are you as excited as I am? So who's ready to begin? I certainly am. <laughs> Okay, let's get started. Let's meet a Minecrafter. Let's meet this wonderful software developer, Hiro. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everybody. So excited to be here with you all this morning. My name is Haronid Monsivais. I go by Haro. I use she, her pronouns. And I live in Woodenville, Washington, but I am actually in Redmond, Washington. I'll give you a sneak peek. I'm actually in the Mojang Studio office in Redmond. So this is, we have, uh, it's a very Minecrafty building. So a few fun places here. This is a place we call Spawn Point. So excited to be here with you all today and to have you try an hour of code. I love that. That's amazing. <laughs> and we are so excited to have you join us as well. So students, you know that form. Uh, we would love to hear from you. And Howard would love to know, have you ever completed an escape room before? Great question. So I am a big fan of escape rooms. So I've done I've done several. I've done mostly in-person rooms. I haven't done too many digital rooms besides this one for the Hour of Code. Um, but I, yes, I think once I got stuck. But all of the other times I have managed to escape. Nice. Would you consider yourself an escape room expert? Ooh, I am an escape room enthusiast. I don't right. know if I'm an escape room expert. <laughs> I love it. Oh, and then we also have students that are coming in and they're telling us, no, we haven't tried this before from Ms. Chip Page's class. We have Natalie um, that says, yes, or yes, Jonathan has mentioned, yes, you have. 
Uh, we have Jada that says, no, nope, that's okay. We're trying this out now virtually. I've never done a virtual escape room as well. So I'm curious to see if we're able to break away and escape. <laughs> And we have Zenobia saying, yes, Addy, yes. Whoa, we have several escape room enthusiasts in our audience here. So welcome. Thank you. All righty. Our next question here is, what does it mean to debug? This is a great question. So I do a lot of debugging in my day-to-day -day work. I think I, in my excitement to show you the Minecraft office, forgot to tell you what I do here at Minecraft. <laughs> but I am the development lead for Minecraft Education, which is the game that you are going to try today. So my team of seven engineers actually writes the code that makes the game work. And as part of that, we do a lot of debugging, which is finding and fixing problems in the code that make it not work the way we want it to work. So that is what I would say. That's what it means to me to debug. Yeah, that's actually quite interesting because sometimes when you're coding, you always expect things to like run smoothly. But you know, with everything in, in life, there's always going to be some kind of problem. So uh, I think we also have some of the students who are telling us their definition, which is great. Zoe has mentioned that like, oh, debugging to her means fixing the mistake in the code. Warlin says to fix a problem. So yes, I, I, I like that you're approaching programming as you're tackling a problem. You're trying to solve something. Oh, Miss Page's class saying fixing a problem or fixing programming. Great job. You've really got it. So thank you. And thank you, Harold, for your answer. Um, is there anything else? We are going to open up the floor for some questions. Anything that you would like to find out more? Maybe how cool is it to work at Minecraft? How do you work at Minecraft? <laughs> we have plenty of time. Give us some questions. Harold's here to answer them. Yeah, we have some students that are telling us, oh yeah, Coda says that debugging means that it's just fixing an error. While we're waiting for some of the questions coming in at the forum, Harold, I was just wondering, um, and we have a very interesting question here, but before we go into it, um, what do you think, so let's just say we're starting from scratch, like just me, <laughs> like uh, into programming, what coding language would you uh, suggest? Oh, for beginners, what a great, what a great question. So I would say for beginners, definitely any block-based coding language is awesome. So I know the Hour of Code today, you can do blocks with make code. I know that you, you can also in other programming uh, activities do stuff with Scratch, there's Alice. So there's lots of different options for block-based coding. The reason I like it is it teaches you the logic piece of how to build a program, but you don't have to worry about the syntax piece which is what are the exact things I need to type. Computers are very picky about you have to type it in the exact way. If you have spelling mistakes or grammar mistakes, then the computer does not know what to do. And so block-based coding takes away that piece, which is just causes extra frustration for no good reason. Okay, well, so I'm so pretty excited because we are going to be doing uh, block-based coding today. So I guess the students will get to find out more. And we have a question here from Anna. Um, what is your favorite animal in Minecraft? Ooh, oh, that's such a hard question. It, I have two. I really like the parrots. The reason I really like the parrots is that they follow NPCs around and so they kind of cluster and I think that looks really pretty. Uh, but I also really like the pandas and that's just, they're too cute. Pandas I know. Are too cute. Oh, pandas are also my favorite as well. And we have another question from Abigail. What's your favorite color? Ooh, good question. My favorite color is green. And you see a lot of that in the Minecraft world. Definitely. <laughs> we have a question from Miss uh, Madame Bennett's class. They would like to know when you're designing a world, um, do you ever get stuck on something? And what do you do when you do get stuck? What a great question. So yes, I get stuck every day. Every day I get stuck. Uh, it is very normal when you're doing anything with programming, anything with code, to, to get stuck. And the thing that I like to do, I like to do a few things. First, I will try to see if I can figure it out on my own. But if I start to get very frustrated, I will step away from the computer and maybe take a walk, relieve some of that frustration. I also like to ask other people in my team, hey, I have this problem. What do you think? What are some ways that you think we might fix it? And so, I, you know, some people don't realize, but programming and computer science are very, very collaborative. And so it's very important to be able to work well in a team and to work well with others and to help each other out. I like that. Uh, we have uh, we have a question from Cyrus, and he asks, "How long does it take to make a game like Escape Estates, Harold?" 
great question. So this year's Hour of Code is probably our more our most complex Hour of Code game so far. And so we started work on this in January and released it in October. So it took something like 10 months to build this game. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> wow. Um, and I guess they some uh, we have a grade seven student here. Uh, that's grade four students that's asking, do you use JavaScript? Uh, Ooh, excellent question. So JavaScript, for those of you that are not familiar, is a programming language, right? So like I mentioned, blocks, another programming language that the Hour of Code lets you try is Python. So JavaScript is another programming language. And we definitely do use JavaScript in Minecraft. So in Minecraft education, when you are starting the game, some of you might remember you have to log in with your username and your password. And when you log in, it calls something called a service. And that service is just another computer. And that computer is running JavaScript to figure out if you can join the game. Mm, very neat. We have a question from Lucas. And he was wondering, what is your favorite block in Minecraft? Oh, my favorite block. There's so many. How can you choose? So, how do you choose a favorite block in Minecraft? I'm going to have to go with Redstone uh, because there is so much you can do with it. It's just, I saw somebody make Minecraft in Minecraft using, <laughs> using Redstone blocks. Uh, so probably, probably Redstone is my favorite block. It is quite powerful, <laughs> that, that block as well. Um, and we have, oh, Dylan, that's just popped in. Uh, how do you start working for Minecraft? That's a great question. So there are many, many different types of jobs that we do here at Moyang. So there's lots of, you know, a lot of people think, oh, I should be a programmer. And certainly we have a lot, lots of people like myself that come from a computer science background and, and program. We also have game designers and they might come from an art background. We also have our wonderful marketing team that come from a marketing background. We also have our social media team and they can come from a communications background. We also in education team have former teachers and educators who are in charge of our learning content. So lots of different ways that you can get into Minecraft. I like that there are different facets that you can actually like be involved in a game design. So you don't actually need to know coding really, really, really well. It, as long as you know the, the logistics behind it, the, you know, the, how it runs, then you can always apply your expertise to it. So if you're an artist, you can always design things. If you're a great communicator, then maybe you can apply for the business side of things. Absolutely. So, thank you. Um, we have another question from Cameron was asking, um, what is your favorite biome? There's so many different. Oh, there's so many different biomes. I'm going to be boring and say I like planes. Uh, but the reason I like the planes biome is because that is where I actually work. So at, in the Mo Yang office, as you can see, I'm in spawn point right now. But the different, we call them clusters, where all the desks are and where all the computers are, uh, are the different biomes. So I used to work in Nether a few months ago, and they recently moved me to planes. And so <laughs> in planes, you know, the carpet is green and the, their sky in the ceiling sort of like here. Uh, I don't know. It's just a very peaceful place to work. And so that's why it is currently my favorite. Although if you'd asked me a few months ago, I would have said nether because that's where I work. <laughs> that's kind of cool that you get to like shift around in different biomes. For um, sure. We do have, I think, uh, another question from Abdullah. How long have you worked for Minecraft? Yeah, great question. So I joined the team, let's see, in 2018. So, so a bit over four years now that I have that I have been here. Cool. And how are you finding it in terms of, I guess, like the day to day at Minecraft? Because obviously it sounds very exciting. You're in different biomes every day, but there are some points that get really frustrated, and you are asking your teammates, "What happened?" Well, uh, you've already mentioned this, Harold, a couple of times. Like, oh, you know, you take a break from a problem and like take a walk. But is there anything? Um, that you do, that you kind of like lean on your teams uh, whenever you find yourself getting stuck, that you're just unable to solve that coding problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so for, for getting stuck specifically, um, we have lots of ways that we talk to each other. So we are a hybrid team. What that means is that you're welcome to come to the office like I am today, and you're welcome to work from anywhere where you would like to work. We have people that work from all across the globe. And so we have, uh, a program called Slack, which lets us communicate with each other. And so I use Slack frequently to post to all of Mojang, hey, I have this problem. <laughs> Does anybody know? And you know, you can imagine with a game like Minecraft, 
there are many different pieces, right? So we have a team that is super focused on the graphics and how that looks. And we have a team that is super focused on networking and making sure that multiplayer is working correctly. And we have a team that's super focused on creator tools and, you know, different teams like that. And so if I have a problem specific to, hey, the pandas are behaving weirdly, uh, then I might talk to that team, the team that focuses on mobs, and ask for their help. And they're not people that I work with every day, right? They're not part of the education team, but everybody here is very, very kind, very friendly. Uh, and it's just better if I can go ask for help, I will solve the problem much more quickly than if I just try to solve it on my own, especially if I'm stuck. I really like that. And I like the fact that you're basically leveraging technology to connect people who are from different worlds, which is exactly what we're doing right now. There are so many people tuning in live from the US, India, Canada. So thank you. And mm -hmm. you're experiencing technology live, like the application of it. Um, we do have one final question. Um, unfortunately, what advice do you have for students who are going to start to play Escape Estate in a few minutes? Any hints or tips? Ooh, okay. Get? I'm sure I'm <laughs> sure that you'll, you know, go through this, but Probably my biggest hint with Escape Estate is if you're not sure what to do, look around. This is, a, you know, in this hour of code, because it's an escape room, the first thing to do is to find clues. And so you're going to want to just explore the space that you're in. And you're in a mansion, so you're going to be in different rooms. So when you get into a new room, just take a moment, look around, see if you can find anything different. Uh, you might see something that sparkles, something that's a different color. If you're not quite sure what to do, I would say, look, look above and look below and see if there's any hints that might help you figure out what to do, how to solve that coding puzzle. Thank you, Harold. That's a great tip. And thank you so much for joining us today. Unfortunately, we don't have that much time because we are going to get started. And hopefully we can apply some of these tips into our gameplay. Remember, explore your environment. So thank you so thank much you for so having much. me. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great day. Good to see you. Alrighty, team, we have already met our Minecrafter who is absolutely amazing. And thank you so much for showing us uh, the amazing office space that you are working in. Right now, we are going to be escaping Dr. Bukowski's escape. Now, remember, we are going through the green path blocks. But if you are going to challenge yourself, um, you are more than welcome to choose the yellow path or the red path. Below our video there, there are buttons where you can click directly into the yellow path and red path. Um, make sure you check in with your teacher to see if that is to get their permission to explore on your own. We are going to be on the screen though, exploring our green path with blocks. So remember with Minecraft Education Edition for this, uh, you do not need to sign in, but if you do, um, then feel free to sign in. Uh, if you don't, then click on the new and feature section on the main page there. And once you click on there, you'll see Hour of Code Escape Estate. So make sure you click on there and then start your world. So make sure you create world. And that's when your Minecraft is going to start loading. It's going to start to think. And then we're going to pop into the world shortly. Now, teachers, remember, you can feel free to pause this video right now and wait until everybody's game has loaded and then play this video again. So check in with your students, make sure everybody is in the right space. Okay, so let's get started. Now remember with Hour of Code, we have our welcome message here. So welcome to Hour of Code 2022. So let's start with a short tutorial. To begin, use your device to either left click or press the correct control scheme that best applies you. Now in this case, we're popping into dance screen. Feel free to use a keyboard or touch controls if you're on a tablet but I believe Mr. Dan here is going to be using his keyboard <laughs> to demonstrate live for us. So are you ready, Dan? I am ready. So before we get started, just a quick aside here. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to Immersive Reader, which is an absolutely incredible, amazing accessibility tool. Uh, so if you click on this button, this little book icon down here on an NPC screen, you can open up Immersive Reader. And you can also access Immersive Reader by clicking the I key on your keyboard if you're looking at a slate, a poster, a board, or a sign, uh, something with text in it in Minecraft. And it will also open up Immersive Reader that way. So in here, uh, we can click play, and it will read this back to us. And we can change. We've got some voice settings here. We can change the voice speed 
uh, we can change the voice mm -hmm. selection. And up in the, to uh, the top right corner here are some um, amazing tools where we can adjust the text size. Um, if I've been reading all day, my eyes are getting a wee bit tired. Um, sometimes I can change the theme and, and uh, change it to a different background, so it might be a little bit easier to read for me. If I click on this here, I can highlight syllables, I can show nouns and verbs, and also really cool line focus, which again is really great if I've been reading all day and I need a little bit of help focusing on what I'm supposed to be reading. Line focus is an amazing tool here. And I can even change languages. So for example, here I could, I mean, there's tons to choose from here. I'm just going to pick French here as an example. And if I toggle on document, it will convert the whole document to French for me. Uh, and it will also read it in French or any of the other languages that I picked. And if I want to get out of Immersive Reader, I can just click the exit arrow up at the top left. So that is Immersive Reader. So I'm just going to click keyboard to optimize for my computer. And now I'm going to walk up here and I'm going to right click. So if you're using a traditional Windows uh, computer with a mouse, you can right use the right click button. Or if you're using a Chromebook, you might use what we call the snake bite for the uh, right click. Or alternatively on the Chromebook, you can hold down your control button and tap the mouse pad once. If you're using a iPad or a touch screen, uh, and I always get these confused, but I believe it's a long press and hold to do a right click and once to do uh, a left click. So I'm gonna right click here and we're getting started. Escape, escape. Oh, I'm excited. All righty. Where are you at, ah, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. Welcome. The following tutorial will teach you the basics of navigating Minecraft. Left click, start tutorial to begin. If you do not require a tutorial, left click start skip tutorial to begin the experience hmm okay. i guess we are going to start the tutorial yes okay so i'm just going to use my i've got my crosshairs my point of focus here in the center of the screen a little plus sign so i'm just going to move my mouse to look around and continue looking at the orb I always like to use the tutorial to just to review my buttons, making sure. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're not familiar with the buttons, you can press H on your keyboard. It should be open by default, but if they're not there, you can press H to open up your keyboard hints, or you can press H to hide them. So I'm just going to leave them up for a few minutes right now. So I can use my W key to move forward. So I'm just going to follow the glowing breadcrumb trail here. And I'm going to use my S key to slide around a little bit and my D key to slide around a little bit as well and I'm walking wherever I'm pointing okay navigate past the wall okay there we go and space to jump I'm gonna run here and jump uh there we go I made it oh Whoa. there we go <laughs> Woo, you did it. Congratulations, Dan. You've completed the movement tutorial. OK, so for more instructions on how to interact with the world, press H to show controls. And we just did that. So now we have our controls on the left-hand side. Now, remember, I think we just went through the tutorial quite quickly. So feel free to pause and make sure that everybody has completed the video, uh, the tutorial. And once everybody's done with the tutorial and they're ready to continue, then click play to this video and we are going to continue to start. And remember, if you have any questions, you can always use the form to connect with us, but we're going to keep going. So your next steps, remember, we're going to first meet Dr. Burkowski and then enter the estate. And then we're going to find the lost diary page and read it. And then finally, we're going to meet our agent and select our programming language. So let's find Mr. Dr. Burkowski. Let's go. Ooh. Okay, so I'm going to right click on this this button here. Oh, there we go. Ooh. There's Dr. Burkowski. 
So I'm going to right click to interact on the NPC. Hello, I am Dr. Dodge Burkowski. I see you've received my invitation. Do you think you have what it takes to escape the mansion by dawn and claim the one million emeralds? Excellent. Now head to the front door and begin your adventure. Now, before we go, I do notice that some people may uh, struggle to find escape estate. So you may need to update your Minecraft education edition version at the next pause. Once it's all updated, you should be able to see that in the new and featured section. So we are going to be pausing soon. So just follow along. Feel free to rewind afterwards too. Okay. So I got swallowed by the house there. That was a really I know. Cool I completely graphic. missed that. I was like, what happened? <laughs> and I'm just going to walk up here. I've got some glowing lost diary. So I'm going to right click on that. Oh, I got a trophy. Ooh. All right, so I'm going to open up this diary here by right-clicking on it. Okay, you have found the lost diary. Can you find all 10 missing pages as you explore the mansion? Use previous and next below to view the notes you've collected. Okay, so we have 10 different pages. Okay, so let's see. We have our first entry, the attic. Dear diary, last week I received an invitation from some mystery person challenging me to escape this mansion. The notes said that if I escaped by dawn, I'd win a million emeralds. Though I didn't need the emeralds, I thought a challenge like this would make a great video for my channel. Ha, nice. However, when I arrived here, I was gobbled up by the mansion. Oh no, just like Dan did. I know that doesn't make sense, but it is the truth. I swear. When I came to, I found myself in this attic. There are three locked doors. One of them must be the way out. I just need to figure out how to open them. Okay. All right. So I've got. Oh. Oh. The we agent. have an agent here. Okay. I guess we just found our agent. So what is our agent saying here? Hello? Is someone there? Oh my, a human. Do you think you can help me? I can't seem to open this door yet. Or oh, this door vent. I think my code may be broken. Do you think you could take a look and see what's wrong with it? Hmm. I wonder. Okay, let's click next. Great. If you can help me out here, I will return the favor and help you escape the attic. Which programming language would you like to use? Now remember, we are going to be using blocks and this is, as the agent has said, it's best for beginners. But if you consider yourself quite an advanced programmer, then feel free to challenge yourself on the Python path, but we will not be doing that so for those who are joining us with blocks make sure you click on blocks now we are at our pause stage right now so we just took a look at our diary we met with our agent and we selected our programming language this is a great time to take a pause teachers check in with your students and see where they're at and once you're ready then click on play and we're going to continue on so now we're going to be coding the trap door. So make sure you follow the on-screen prompts and we're going to be using our new friend here, our agent to open and close the trap door. So let's pop back to Dan's screen there. Okay, so I am, as Illabella said, we are selecting blocks today. So I'm going to click on that. Okay, so our agent is saying that first see the cursor over there on the floor. It needs to move forward three blocks to reach the trap door. But if it doesn't work, press C to view the code and then run the code to see what is wrong. Okay, let's mm, see what okay. we're actually dealing with here. All right, so I'm gonna hide my keyboard hints. And okay, so it looks like I've got my cursor here and it looks like I've got to move about three blocks over. Generally what I do, particularly in Minecraft, while I am trying to figure out a problem with Code Builder, and I need to see what I've got in my world, I'll sort of move over a little bit so that I've got it on one side so I can put my coding screen up to the other side. So I press C on my keyboard to activate my code builder. As you can see, it's blocking what I need to see here, but that's okay because we can actually move the screen back and forth if needed. And we click on the little sandwich button here and we can click flip window and it'll move it to the other side. So now I can see what I need over here really handy little feature. So we have some instructions here and I have to admit, uh, I'm, I'll, I'll need some help slowing me down because 
I tend to have a bad habit of skipping instructions and just barreling forward. And one of the most important things about doing coding type things is that you should really read the instructions. So Isabella, if you can help me with that here, if I do skip ahead and, and bring me back. <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure. I am here to help. So according to the instruction, the box with the orange arrow on the floor is our cursor. Okay. Uh, and you use the cursor throughout the house to change blocks. In this activity, we'll use the cursor to open the trap door and release the agent. Interact with the light bulb for more help. So ooh, we always have a light bulb there in case we need more help. We can click on there. Um, this included example code that is broken. Can you fix it? Debug the code by running it to see what it does and then edit it to the correct solution. Okay. Hmm. So uh, I'm going to run... The, the broken code first. I always run the code first and test it to see if it is truly broken and to maybe get an idea of where it is broken to help me give, uh, give me a little bit of a hint as to what I need to fix. So let's click the green button with the white arrow at the bottom to start our code. Okay, I'm watching the cursor. Oh, no. Okay, so it's only gone to Hmm, that's not quite right. The cursor needs to move to the trap door and tell it to open. Oh, okay. Okay. So I'm going to go back to my coding screen here. So in my workspace, I've got cursor move orange, which is to the uh, left of me. And it's only moving two. So I think we need to move that three. I think and so too. it's also missing open trap door. Open so trap the toolbox door. at the side here are all the different blocks that I'm going to need for the specific problem. So each problem that we encounter along here is going to have a list of only the blocks we need to solve the problem. And we can just click on here, left click and hold, and we can drag that over to our workspace. When we see it in the workspace here, as you can see, it's kind of see-through right now. If I drag that up here, It'll go a little yellow underline, which means I can release my left button and let it click into place. So now it's active. It's turned purple or it's turned the color it's supposed to be. It's in this on start block. So I know when I run this, it will run all these in sequence. If I want to get rid of one of these, I can just drag that and drop that over into the toolbox area. And you'll see there's a little waste bin at the bottom that opens up so I can release that to drop it into the bin. Okay. All right. So I'm going to drag this back over and highlight it. And now I'm going to run my code and see what happens. Whoa, great. It's open. That's strange. I still can't seem to get out. Can you check the code again and make sure I'm moving up two blocks? OK. So let's see here. C to code again. And I'm just wondering, uh, Dan, if you yeah. could also just zoom in to the code, just in case, um, you know. I can't really yeah. see Yeah, so I can use I can use this here. There's a slider here with a plus and minus sign so that I can actually increase the size of that coding screen. Perfect. So I can see if I were to drag a new block, I know where to attach. Sometimes I, mm -hmm. I get a little confused. Yes. Okay, so now that the trapdoor is open, move the agent up two blocks to set it free. The included example code is broken. So can you fix it? Hmm. Okay. So our agent is only going to move up one right now. So we're just going to run that code to make sure that it's a problem. Oh. Yep. And he's, he's still stuck in the floor. So I'm going to say we're going to need to move our agent two. There we go. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. You fixed my code. Now I'm in the range to open the green door for you. The path behind the green door is an easier one. You can take that path or talk to me again if you want to try opening the yellow door. Okay. So we we just are going to follow. Sorry, coded, go ahead. Yeah, we just coded the trap door. We saved our agent, and now our agent is here to ready to help us. We're going to pause until everybody has opened and closed the trap door. So teachers, this is a great time. Check in with your students. See where everybody's at. Make sure that they're all done with coding the trap door. And when you're ready to go, let's go. So were you able to escape? Was your agent able to escape? Now we're going to follow the green path and see if we can actually escape the estate. 
Okay, so I'm going to follow the green path here. And away we go. Woo. Okay. Now for the folks, before we continue on, uh, for those who are not able to get their game loaded, make sure you restart. Sometimes things happen. So if your game doesn't seem to be working, always restart the game. So make sure you quit Minecraft, restart it, click on, go to the main screen, do all that fun stuff. And then meet us right here. We're always going to be here. So feel free to pause, rewind, and then click play. Okay, then we're ready. Let's see. Wait, before you go, I need to tell you one last thing. This house is filled with escape rooms. You'll need to find clues, solve puzzles, and fix codes to make your way out. Press C to review the puzzle's code. Run the code to see what happens. If there are errors, fix the code and run it again and test it. Is called debugging. Ah, so remember, we, we just asked Haro uh, what debugging meant for her. And now our agent is telling us to actually start debugging some of the problems that we're going to see. So sometimes solutions won't be clear and not all puzzles take code to solve. When you find a puzzle, remember to run the code first to see what's wrong, then debug and fix the faulty code. It's much easier than writing code from scratch. Keep an eye out for clues such as particles to help you guide you. Hmm. Okay. And one one hint I will uh, give everyone uh, while we're talking about deciphering and debugging coding issues is I always keep a pad of paper and a pen or pencil with me to make notes as I go along. So it may be notes like turn right, turn left, move five spaces, that kind of thing, so that I have something to compare with what I've got on screen as I'm deb debugging. So it's a bit of a cross-reference there. Oh, just another way of helping me debug stuff. Um, and also, if you get a little frustrated, if you're having trouble figuring out, don't forget about that light bulb hint. Or it's always good to have a fresh uh, set of eyes look on the problem. So Isabella, uh, I'm going to ask you if that's OK yes. um, to occasionally help me out when I get stuck, because I will get stuck because there are, I, I, you know, when you're coding, you do make mistakes quite naturally. You may forget a little bit here. You may forget to change number. You may change a number that you shouldn't have changed. And especially I've been looking at code all day and I will miss those little those, those little subtleties. So I will often rely on somebody to come along and look at it for me and invariably they will see exactly what I missed almost instantaneously often um, just because it's a fresh set of eyes that hasn't looked at it before or you know you could always take a break and have your own eyes be your fresh set of eyes take a wee break go and have a glass of water take a few deep breaths come back because you won't accomplish anything if you're frustrated okay so I'm going to start looking around this room here so I need to look for I need to look for a diary page and yeah. I need to look for some particles or something. So let's have a wee look around. I like that they gave you the picture of what the particles look like because mm -hmm. I also wasn't sure. <laughs> okay. Well, I do see, I see my diary page. Ooh. Okay. We have entry number two. Remember, we have to collect all 10 of them. So entry number two, the study. Dear diary, I finally found a way out of the attic only to become trapped in this strange library. I do believe the large mirror here is more than it seems. Is it truly a mirror or a window to another dimension? Regardless, I have no option other than to press forward and see where it takes me. Okay. All right. So, okay, this is the mirror. It's uh, it's very dark right now. I'm not seeing anything going on there. So let's have a look around and see if we can spot. Oh, I think I see it. There we go. Here oh, wow. Here are the over here. Okay, so I'm gonna get in the hint here to click this button. Oh, wow, that's cool. cool. All right, so I've got I've got a problem here. I'm just gonna back up a little bit so that I can see that a wee bit better, and move over to the side of the screen. And I'm gonna bring up my code window here. Okay. Okay, so what are we trying to do here? Move the clay ball to the gold block. Interact with the light bulb if you need help. Now try running the default code to see what happens. Then make any changes you need to solve the puzzle. This is called debugging. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so yeah, let's let's run that code and see what happens. So we're gonna move to the gold block, and it's oh. it's moved over to the left. It's moved to the red block instead. So let's bring the code back up again. Uh, let's see if I can sort this out. Um, play ball, move up by three. So one, two. I'm just using my mouse to kind of gauge how many blocks it's moving up here. One, two, three. Okay, so that first one's okay. Move left. Ah, there's the problem. So it's moving left instead of right. So it should move one, two, yeah. and then move down three. One, two, three. So I think that should work now. We'll give that a try. All Yay! right. I love that. The paint moves up and down. That's very cool. OK. Um, search the room for particles again. So I'm just having a wheel look around. Mm. Oh, I see a change. Oh, you can see through it. Mm-hmm. So it's like a mirror now. So that's interesting. There's, there's no sparkles on this side, but the sparkles on this side. So I think, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so there's there's three pumpkins here, but oh. there's five over there. So I bet that's something to do with uh, our next problem. But it looks like I have to do something with these, these uh, lights here. So I'm going to turn on. So I can see that that one is lit up here, but it's not lit up here. So I'm going to light that one up. And then that one should be off. It looks like that last one should be on. Oh, I'm even getting a little bit of a hint here. here. Ooh. here yeah. Oh, okay. Here's my problem. Okay, so I'm guessing I'm going to have to have five pumpkins along here, but let's read the instructions. Okay, so let's see. What do we have to do? The pumpkins above the fireplace in the mirror is somehow different than the ones in the room. Try making them match. So as always, the example code is broken. So can you fix it? Debug the code by running it and see what it does and then edit to the correct solution. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's run this code here. Hmm. Okay, so it's missed one right away. Okay, oh. and a big, the, that's, that's a good indicator there that it's not working. Nice big red cross there to indicate that it's not. It's not quite right. Um, okay, so there's a couple of different options that I can do here. Like I've, they've added a loop block, which means that it will rep uh, repeat a certain sequence over again. So I just have to make sure whenever I use a loop that if I've got one of these in this sequence here, it's doing each action multiple times rather than using them in a loop. So I just have to make sure that the numbers are right in here. Uh, so that they match up with the loop properly. So I'm going to get adventurous, and I'm going to try a loop here. I'm going to put that in my unstart block. So I know I need to move that way with the blue arrow. The blue we're moving arrow. once. And then we are going to place... Oh, you know what? I forgot. We need to place a pumpkin first before we even move. I'm going to have that outside oh. of the loop because I've got the movement first. Um, and then I want to place a block. So one, two, three, four. So that will repeat that four times. And I'm actually not going to delete that. I'm going to leave that there just in case I need it. So I think that might work. Let's give that a try. One, two, three, four. And we have our fat. All right. Pumpkin. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> okay, so we're looking for more particles. And oh. Oh, nice. There we go. It's also nice and oh, okay. <laughs> so you just walked <laughs> into <laughs> It wasn't okay. my fault. I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm looking for particles. Um, do you see any particles, Isabella? Oh, I see it. It's right oh, yeah? underneath the blue block there. Oh, okay. Okay, so right click. Okay, so I'm going to right click this, and what happens here? 
speedy oh. night. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so, okay, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be doing here. So I am going to press the C button and read the instructions. Okay. All four levers must be flipped in the correct order very quickly to open the door. Code the speedy knight to rapidly pull the levers for you. Now, the included example code is broken. So can we fix it? Let's okay. See. So let's try running that code. Okay, so these are oh. these are not in the right order. So we just got to move them into the right order. What's the hint for the order? If I try to do it, oh. I can't do it fast enough. See, you can't. Yeah, even it. if I run, I can't do it. Okay, so we definitely have to use that speedy knight here. So let's let's just run that code again and see where it goes wrong first. So blue. And, uh, oh, orange is not right. Blue, orange, yellow, purple. Okay. That is so not the right. That, okay, so it's got to go blue and then magenta. Okay, so yeah, okay. Let's grab those out. Magenta. And we'll run that to see where the next issue is. And sometimes that's a big part of running and finding oh. out where the code is going wrong as well as to run your code in parts to see where it's going wrong and then fix a little bit and then run it again to see where that next error, if there is another error, comes up. So breaking it down. So I, I didn't catch that. Uh, which one was it next? I saw this. Uh, so it was still correct. So you have your blue magenta. And then I think the next one should be orange. OK. Put orange in. And, and then we'll we can try this again. Gets. So, so far, so good. Oh, oh no. it's yellow. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. That, that's, that's great. Now we know that it's blue, magenta, yellow, orange. All right. All right. Room cleared. Moving on Ooh, to the next leave. one. Yes. One room down. <laughs> okay. Oh, we've got a zombie. Uh, it's not coming to, to, to eat me, so it might be a friendly zombie. Oh, and, and we are being indicated to talk to it here. So, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, I'm supposed to do something here. Let's press C again to get our instructions. Hmm. The zombie chef needs help making bread. Use the code blocks to create a recipe the zombie chef can follow. Okay. I'm excited okay. to see. All right. So let's uh, let's run the, the code here. Harvest wheat, make dough, bake into bread, mill wheat. What's happening now? And it's running the code. Mm -hmm. Let's grab the, the wheat. Oh. Yeah, I guess you can't make wheat you into dough until you've yeah, you've milled it first. So oh we've got a we've got a little hint here too. Okay. So order of operations. Harvest wheat. Let's drag this out. Wheat. Mill wheat. Mill wheat. And then make, make dough. dough. Bake into bread. Let's see, see how that works for us. <laughs> I love it. Yes! Okay. <laughs> Look at that piece of bread. <laughs> bread. Oh, that's opened up. Okay. We have even more zombies. Oh, something something going mean? on here. The house is hungry, and what better to feed it than apples, salmon, and mushroom stew? See if you could figure out how many of each item the house requires. The include example code is broken. Can you fix mm. it? Mm. Okay. So let's run that broken code. <laughs> oh, there's a little face in the house. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so that doesn't work. So 
I suspect it has to do with these zombies here. So, so the zombies let's have see. three I, apples. Three apples, and this is where my pad of paper comes in handy. So three apples. Just write it down here. Uh, four zombies was that was salmon. Mm -hmm. And, and we have two oh, I the soup. mushrooms, I think. Two mushrooms, too? Two mushrooms, is it? Okay. Here we go. Two mushrooms. Okay. Let's bring up the code again. So feed house, feed house, and then the soup. Okay, so we needed two soup, four salmon, and three, three apples. apples. Oh, I think it still says zero soup. Oh, so like we can run oh, the. Did I do zero soup? soup? Did I <laughs> did I miss it? We can see. Let's see okay. if the house is happy. Ooh. No. Okay. So I've I've made a mistake here, and that is that's very common when you're coding. So I thought I typed it in there, but I might have been too quick when I was I was clicking, and that that frequently happens when I'm working on script to code anywhere. I'll miss something, and it, it's just simple like this. But Isabella caught it even before. Uh, I'd caught it myself. That's amazing. <laughs> That's why it's Good great to proofread there. your code. Have a yeah. fun to check over. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. And that that is another fault of mine frequently as well. Sometimes I just go and I write the code. I don't even I don't even look over it. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, it's good. And then I run it. I'm like, oh, it's not working. Why is that? It's perfectly fine. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I've know. left out critical information. Perfect. All right. So we've got our two mushroom soups there. And, and we are running it again see. now. And folks, while we're waiting here, I just wanted to let you know we are at our 20-minute mark. 20 minutes until the end of our lovely video here. So make sure you are either at our pace or maybe beyond that. So we'll see. We just fed our house. 20 minutes to go. Okay, so, oh, I see some sparkles over here. But, you know, before I forget, there's, I'm wondering if there's a diary page in here. that Did oh, yeah. we find one already? Mm, I haven't seen a page. Is okay. it stuck to the ceiling? Maybe. No, I'm not seeing a page in beyond. here. Hmm. Just a quick look around just in case. On the floor. Oh, oh. here it is. Nice. Alrighty, diary entry number three, the kitchen. Dear diary, today I stumbled upon a large dining area. Here I found a frightening creature looming in the kitchen, seemingly oblivious of my presence. When I gained the courage to speak with the chef, it only grown bread. Dare I help this ghoulish cook? Perhaps if I do, it can show me the way out. Okay. Mm. All right. So we did that part. So this this must be his gruesome customers. And <laughs> we've got a, a skeleton with some sort of weird fish-looking fish? looking yeah. thing. And then we've got a creeper who hasn't exploded yet, so I don't think it's going to. And it's got some zombie flesh. And we've got a skeleton with a, like a greenish drumstick. Uh, uh, and then we've got a zombie here with uh, looks like some bone meal in a bowl. So I'm thinking that we're going to need to... They're not happy with what they've got in front of them, which is why they haven't eaten it yet. So see what the instructions say about what we're going to do here. Mm, it seems the zombie chef gave everyone the wrong meal. Search the kitchen for the menu and make sure everyone ends up with the correct meal. You only need to add one block at the to the end of the debug code. Mm. Oh, just one. Hmm. Okay. So let's run the code and see what happens. Right now, so they're just swapping. Oh. Mm, they're oh. still not happy. I see. Okay. So two people are happy and then two people are not. Hmm. There's the menu, so that helps us. So the skeleton wants the bone meal. The keeper wants the weird green drumstick. Uh, the the other skeleton wants this weird fish looking thing, and then the zombie wants the zombie flesh. Okay, that makes sense. So now we've got to figure out which ones to swap. Okay, so hmm, um, which one needs to go where? So I guess the blue path will switch those ones. And then the magenta will swap sides. And then I think 
thinking here. Uh, Maybe try switching yeah. side for the yellow. Yeah. Okay. We'll give that. End. Okay. Let's mm -hmm. see. So I've done puzzles like this before. They're always kind of tricky. Oh. Oh, we oh. got it. <laughs> <laughs> they ate everything. Yay. All right. Room clear. Okay. So in through the next door. Okay. So we're done with kitchen. Woo. We are making strides. Hopefully, we can escape mm -hmm. the estate. Okay, so another big. This is a really big room. Um, Search for particles. Okay, looking and for maybe particles. our diary page too. Yeah, let's have a wee look around for the diary page before we get too carried away. Oh, yes. there we go. Perfect. Diary page entry number four. The parlor, dear diary. The large door in the foyer looks like it could lead out of the mansion. But how does one open it? Could this chessboard unlock the door? Surely there must be clues lying about. I've come too far to go back now. Okay. Um, all right, so we've got some particles over here. and Oh, there's some particles over there too. So well, let's try this one first. Okay. I'm press the button, right click on the button to start that. And... Hmm. Oh. Okay. Okay, it's one of those puzzles. Okay. Oh. These ones are hard. All right, so see the code. Okay, let's see how we can fix this. It seems like the picture got scrambled. Let's see if we can push the blocks around to make to put the picture back in order. Again, you are included with an example code that is broken. So can you fix mm -hmm. it? Let's okay, see. so let's uh, let's run the code and see what happens. So yellow's pushing first, We're pushing, pushing, then green, oh. and then oh, it's the top one, red. Okay, maybe if I back up just a little bit so I can see that a little better. Perfect. Okay, let's bring that up. Okay, so now I can see all the arrows good, so I can kind of try out something else here. So you know, I'm just gonna grab these over and put them at the side. I'm gonna grab new arrows. So I've got the original one here as sort of another reference um, to know not what to do to remember what was not right with that code. Mm. Uh, which is a, a, actually it's a technique that I, I'll frequently do with my code. Like I'll take a copy of the code that I have so that I've still got the, 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 the code that has uh, errors in it, and then I'll work from a new one. Um, and that will help me sort of, if I look back and forth as I go through, it'll help me compare them and identify those errors perhaps. Or in some cases, um, it'll actually help me avoid making new errors as well. Yeah. So I'm thinking, let's see, yellow. I think the first line was perhaps correct. Yes. Yeah. So push okay. the yellow and then. And then. And then Maybe blue. Pushing blue? it up? Yeah. Yes, yes. Blue. And blue. And then I think maybe green. Give that a go. Oh, there we go. Yeah. First try. OK. Oh, and we're being asked to come up here. And let's click that. Puzzle solved. All right. Oh, where oh, did it go? King takes bishop. Oh, 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 so there's a chess game here. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. So, um, oh, right. More particles. So let's try that. Okay. Okay. So the whole thing's glowing. Oh, I got to remember to check the instructions. So press and C here. Okay, so as before we start, I just wanted to let you know we are super close to the end. So we are at a 10 minute warning. So make sure perhaps this may be our last puzzle that we can solve. And then we'll get back together and see what we can do to wrap up. Okay, okay. so I think there seems to be something at the top of the bookcase. And I remember I saw, I think the queen is hovering at the back of the bookcase. Okay. There. See if you can create a way to get up there. Again, you are included in example code that is broken. So let's try and debug and fix it to see what we can do to create the correct solution. Okay. One. Okay. 
Oh, it just keeps moving. Okay. So let's kind of move this. Or, oh, I'm going to move all of this off to the side. So, yeah, if I grab that first one, it will drag the rest of them with me. Um, so, okay. So we're going to, yeah, we're going to, going to go back here. I'm going to reset this so Place that blocks. Yes. I'm not confused here because there's a little sign there that says reset. So we can click on that to clear that board for us so that we get a nice clean slate to work from. So we've got a loop option here. So I'm going to try something a bit more adventurous again. I'm going to grab the repeat. Okay. So I'm going to, let's see here, place a block. And then I'm going to cursor move. And I'm going to do three times. And Inside then, the loop. Okay. Okay. And then Oof. I'm going to... Cursor move up. So the right, orange cursor? Right, cursor move up. Uh, oh, so that's orange, right? Thank you. And we'll do that outside of the loop. And then we go up one, and then we go over one, two. Oh, forgot that. Move up by one. And then we're going to do, we'll do another loop. And we're going to move one, two. So, um, try to move yellow. yellow by two. Okay. Oh, yeah, we'll change the loop there. So, move once, and we'll repeat that action twice, and place block. I'm actually going to. I'm going to break down the code a little bit. I'm just going to run what we've got so far. Okay. And then, oh, I wanted to do that. I don't want to do that four times. I want to do that. Three. One, two, one. three. No, one, two, three. Yeah, three. So let's try that. Oh, no. One. Two. Oh. Oh, because it doesn't place code every step. Oh, you know what? I think. I changed the I changed the three the one time there, but I I I need that as just Move one. Move cursor by one, and then place right, block. Right, because the yeah the loops doing it. Okay. Let's try this. Let's try that again. Yeah. Oh, something. I did something wrong there. So what did so, I do wrong? When we move up, perhaps we can place a block before we get into the loop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think, yeah, we'll do that. Chris, move, place block. And then mm -hmm. repeat once, I would mm -hmm. say. Let's right, see how that works. Oh, oh. <laughs> So soon. Okay, okay. we're yeah, almost so there. Close. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's see here. And then I guess yeah, we'll move up by, by one. one, and then and then place uh, block. We'll move over by one, so we need to move that way. So and we place then... a block before we move. Uh, right. Right here. Uh, after we move up, place oh, the block. Uh, let's do this. Let's go. Uh, there we go. So we'll put that in and put that there, and we'll try running that. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Let's see how that works. <laughs> up, boop, boop. Up. One, two. Oh. <laughs> so close. <laughs> Uh, okay. I wonder if we could just move. Uh, I think, a, yeah, maybe there's too many right cursor lines. moves in here. Let's move that out. <laughs> Getting frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> this is sometimes a good time for you to take a break, go for a walk, go for a drink of water, and then come back to your code to see what you were missing. Oh, <laughs> Make of this. totally messed it up there. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> okay. So let's 
let's just move this off to the side here. And we'll run and that code again to see exactly. before we, we went wrong. Okay. Okay, so place block. And then um, move one place block. So let's try that. See if we get part of the way there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's totally okay, Dan. I'm going to maybe uh, assign oh. this for you as homework because we are slowly going into the end of our lesson, unfortunately. So we can yes. see how, uh, but we do have five more minutes. So um, we are just going to just double check your code right now and see how it goes. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. You are so close. Maybe we can just add maybe three more blocks so that you can yeah so we can just repeat the code that we just did at the start of the code reusing some oh. of the code so would that be possible yeah so we're going to actually right click on this we're going to oh, duplicate nice. this <laughs> see i'm getting frustrated here so that's why i'm having i'm 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 starting to you know lose my concentration on this so we're going to oh that's that's the wrong one to do is it no, 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 no. No, nope, that's hey, right. No, we're going to leave yeah. that and then there. We it's going to move up by one. And then we'll do this. And we're going to change this to two. So let's try that. Let's try this. <laughs> this is fun to see. Thank you for keeping me anchored. <laughs> being done live. You're like moving up. Boop. Yeah. Oh, brilliant then, suggestion. Uh, that worked perfectly, Isabella. Perfect. Great. So let's, okay, so what do we have to do next? So you know what? I'm going to take your advice for that one. And duplicate I'm just going to do nice. this. And I'll duplicate this here. So I'm just going to right click on here and click duplicate. Oop. And we're going to drag this all the way down here. And let's run that code again. One, two, three. Go back up. All right, oh, yes. teamwork. <laughs> awesome. Okay, All we right. are walking towards it, seeing our queen, tapping our queen. What's going to happen next to our chess game? Oh, wow. Queen takes rook. Perfect. Okay. Ta -da. And we have here a netting code, another coding puzzle. And let's see. Okay. We are going to... We free the king and queen, but the door still isn't opening. The pieces must be in the wrong places. Move them into the correct places so you can finally escape this place. So as you can see, we also have our broken example code. So let's try and debug it by running it first and see what we need to fix to get okay. our correct solution. I like that it has dates to indicate mm -hmm. where it's going. Mm. Okay, so it's not on the right. And, oh, there's some glowing sparkly things over here. So the king's birthday is April 1st. A birthday April cake. 1st. Oh, that's awesome. And then over here we've got the queen's birthday on May 4th. So I'm going to write that down. April 1st and May the 4th. So uh, May the 4th is for the queen, and April 1st is for the king. That's where we have to move them on this grid here, because I'm seeing the dates here and the months here. So let's have a look at the king. So the king is moving three. Two. So let's see here. That's one, That's two, one. three up. So it's got to move. It's, one uh, more. The king is, yeah, so he's got to move one more. To four. And then okay. one over for the that. And then yeah. the queen has to move. So she's April. So one, two, three. Oh, she's moving short one. And then move up by one. I think that'll mm. work. Let's see. May 1st, April 1st. Oh, yeah. 
And then we have oh, oh April four. So close. Oh, One it's more. April April first. Sorry. No. Let's check my notes. For the Queen. So the, the Queen is May the fourth. Yes. So, so we just have to move. One more. Yes. Okay, there we go. Perfect. All right. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Weird. We got our trophy. Okay. Awesome. Oh my goodness. We actually finished our green path and we can finally leave. Oh, Dr. Burkowski. Hello again. It looks like you did it. You managed to make your way through the mansion. Bravo. We knew you could do it. In fact, we were counting on it. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Oh, and we can see that we have several agents here. Rascal is telling you, you see, the place is more than just a mansion. It is an interdimensional prison, one we could not escape, but we knew you could figure it out. And I guess All that right, and is we are time. out of time now. Yes. We're up to unfortunately wrap up. So for those, regardless of where you're at in our path, green, yellow, or red, if you are joining us on a green path for blocks, we're going to take a pause here, wait until everybody has escaped, defeat the time agents, and secure the time orb. Remember, for our path specifically, we did go through the attic, study, kitchen, as well as the parlor. So make sure that you've gone through all of those to grab your time orb. So remember, today we met our Minecrafter, we said hello to Harrow, we escaped Dr. Burkowski's estate specifically on a green path with our blocks coding. And then now it's time for us to reflect on our adventure. Just like Dan, I'm sure you've all experienced some, uh, you know, frustration with debugging our code there. But we also want to celebrate that because we all were able to problem solve and debug our code accordingly. So we want you to grab that certificate. Um, make sure you click on get certificate, download that, show it off to your parents, your friends, uh, to your family. It's always a fun time. Teachers, feel free to pause this and wait until all your students have access to their certificate and close Minecraft. Once your students are done closing off Minecraft, we would like to find out more. What was the hardest room for you to escape? The hardest room for us is definitely the parlor. Would you say so, Dan? <laughs> That was definitely what, yeah, I was, uh, yeah, I was getting a little muddled there at the end, uh, that, but you know what, it was the hardest, but I think it was, I think it was also the most fun. Like we had a good time there trying to figure that out together and work our way around that puzzle. Yeah, that was really hard, especially like, I, you know, I think they were giving you a hint with the path. Obviously, there are different paths. So you can take, mm -hmm. you can obviously have all the blocks horizontally and it just maybe mm -hmm. vertical, but we always want to, yeah, that was really great. I think seeing you and seeing yeah. all the different drafts that you have in your mm -hmm. coding area as well. You know, and I was so flustered, I forgot I could have clicked the light bulb as well. <laughs> I know, it was like glowing. <laughs> it was like, here, you need anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, feel free to let us know in the form. And once you've let us know, what was your strategy when you're debugging the code? Was it the same strategy that Dan used? Because Dan used a pen and paper to just sort of write down what he did wrong and also keep the original code on the side. Let us know, how did you debug the code? And we have here, I believe Sarah has let us know. She said that she went and asked a friend for help. Great job. That's exactly what Dan did. Dan was like, Isabella, help me. <laughs> What's happening here? What am I doing wrong? And then we have Adam saying here, they took a break. Good. Sometimes like standing up, taking a stretch is a great way for you to kind of like take your eyes off of the cold and then come back with fresh eyes. Um, Layla mentioned that they reread their instructions. Yes, sometimes we're not sure what the um, code want us to do. <laughs> so rereading it and I think replaying the incorrect code also helped as well. And then Carter said, delete all the code and start all over again. Yeah, starting fresh as what Dan's done for our uh, puzzle last puzzle there was also a great way to start so thank you so much for those students that have submitted their responses 
So our next question here is, what was the best part of this lesson? What was your favorite part? And let us know. What's your favorite part, Dan? Uh, it was definitely the most challenging one. I love a good and hard <laughs> challenge, <laughs> even if it does frustrate me. And that last one there was, or uh, not the, the the chess one. I like that one just because I, I'm a big fan of chess. It was a nice uh, chessboard thing yeah, going on there. For sure. But yeah, I do I do like that last one with the steps. That was that was one of my favorites. Although, yeah. I also, you know what? There's so many of them. I really also really liked the uh, the the chef and dining, the cooking uh, room as well. I think John also said uh, the zombie chef was a favorite part for him as well. And then we have Emily, the moving picture. For me, it's definitely the uh, the scrambled puzzle piece mm -hmm. at the end. That was kind of cool to see that. Uh, Riley mentioned the different light switches you have to like turn on and off. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was really cool, too. Exactly. I love debugging that mirror window piece <laughs> of puzzle there. So thank you so much for letting us know your responses in the form. And thank you so much for being such amazing students, such engaged students. Great work, everybody. And make sure you ask your teacher for next steps. Check in with them to see what you need to do uh, before you wrap up. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for inviting us into your classroom. This has been a fabulous time with Minecraft Education Edition Escape Estate. Hope to see you next time. Have Bye, everyone. Morning.